Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, we have heard a lot about how much energy we could save, and a little bit I talk about the same subject naturally here again. But uh, I would like to concentrate on the power consumption and energy efficiency improvements, on, especially on telecom networks. A short note about Nokia Siemens Networks. Our company celebrated 1st of April this year, the first anniversary. So we are a pretty new company. However, our parents, Nokia and Siemens, are both companies with well above 100 years old, uh, 100 years age of age. About last year, early last year, Nokia and Siemens carved out their respective telecom infrastructure business from their core business and founded Nokia Siemens Networks. <clears throat> Today, our infrastructure business serves roughly over 1 billion people globally both wireless and wireline networks. Ash, that was too fast again, sorry. <clears throat> Our vision for 2015, roughly 5 billion people connected. Today we have about 3 billion mobile connections and a bit over 1 billion wireline connections. In the future we expect nearly all of these connections will be broadband, broadband in every place. Applications, mostly in the internet, it will be mostly data connection, not just voice connections by then. <clears throat> also, the business will change quite a bit. A couple of years ago, we had one telecom operator per country. That changed to several telecom operators per country. But nowadays, telecom business is not just about telecom operators, but companies like Yahoo and Skype and Google and so on joining the business, providing services. Uh -huh. Oh, it's not so easy here. Um, so, our environmental vision. First, world connected, as I said, 5 billion people. <clears throat> but combining environmental and business benefits is very important. Everybody here is talking about money. We are a company and our key target is, of course, to earn money. We have to earn money to survive as a company. But then we have to mainly ma maximize the positive influence of our business to other uh, industries. And finally, we have to minimize environmental footprint. And these three bullets are basically the outline of my presentation. Um, roughly, telecom industry <coughs> burns in fixed broadband, fixed and broadband networks, something like 20, 25 megatons CO2 annually. And mobile networks contribute with another 22 to 25 megatons. So we talk roughly about 50 megatons CO2 directly by telecom network operations. Now, 50 megatons of annual CO2 emission could be easily saved in the EU alone. So the previous 50 megatons was globally, telecom globally. But we could easily save this in the EU according to a study from the Panda Group. But uh, as I said, we have to combine environment and business benefits, so let's look what would that mean. 50 megatons of CO2 are roughly equivalent to 100 terawatt hours of electricity. <clears throat> In order to produce 100 terawatt hours of electricity, the required energy would be something like 300 terawatt hours of heat, worth in oil 3 billion euros. In electricity, directly, the same amount of energy would be worth about 7 billion euros. So roughly one euro is 160 yen today. So 7 billion euros could be saved simply by using energy more, efficiency, more efficiently. And I think that's a clear business uh, benefit. We talk a lot about how ICT can change energy, reduce energy, but actually there's not a single technology which really can reduce energy. <clears throat> technology always burns energy, produces CO2. The only one who can save energy are we people. And uh, if you just take it as an example, this conference, it's something like 25 degrees outside, the building is cooled down to roughly 20 degrees to feel as comfortable in our jackets. If that conference would happen in Finland in a winter day, it would be probably minus 25 degrees outside <clears throat> and we would heat up the room to more than 20 degrees, 25 degrees probably, to feel as comfortable in the same jacket. Now we have heard that about 50% of the global CO2 emission comes from buildings, from heating and from cooling. 
And just by reducing the temperature in this building, uh, increasing the temperature in this building a little bit and reduce cooling, we could easily save 20, 30 percent of the cooling energy. Vice versa in Finland, by just reducing the temperature a little bit and heat a little bit, we could save another 10, 20 percent of energy. And it wouldn't need any technology. All it would need were seasonal closing. So, but now we are talking about ICT and technology, and we have all paid our very nice and expensive jackets. Let's talk what we can really save with the technology. It was mentioned business travel reduction, <clears throat> and again here you have heard a lot of figures, and I have figures varying from 10 megatons to nearly 60 megatons. The reason is simple. It's not a technology which saves, but it's the people who save. It depends how many people really could change their work. Like flexi working, I typically spend uh, three, four days working at home nowadays, if I'm not traveling, and globally, unfortunately. But um, so depending the amount of people, if it would be something like 10 million people in Europe participate and stay a couple days home, we would save in the order of 10 megatons. But if we could convince 50 million people, which is not impossible in Europe, we would save 50 to 60 megatons. So it really depends on the amount of people who are willing to change the lifestyle. The same is, of course, business traveling. We just talked about video conferencing. Again, here, depending if we just have a few video conferences, we would save in Europe something like five megatons, but it could be easily something like 30 megatons. So whenever you hear a single figure, the figure doesn't say anything. It really is based on the assumption how many people, how many percentage of the people are joining it. Another way of saving was dematerialization, but also the same thing is here. Interestingly enough, just changing our typical home answering machines with a virtual answering machine would be much more efficient. And again, we, the numbers vary pretty much, but if we would replace a bunch of uh, answering machines in Europe, we could save anything between a couple hundred kilotons to several megatons of CO2 annually. Telco billing instead of paper billing, another 100 kilotons, and even taxation. Well, taxation happens once a year. But in Europe, we could save something between 20 and 100 kilotons if we would do the taxation instead of paper sent home and back to the tax office, if we would do it just online on the PC. So this connectivity is actually not only costing money, it really is convenient, economic, and has environmental benefits. But let me come to the energy efficiency and energy consumption of our networks. First, wireless networks. About 10% of the cellular power consumption is burned by the user. And interestingly enough, it's not a mobile phone which burns this energy. <clears throat> if you consider energy consumption, you think it's the mobile phone. No, it's not. It's the charger. Most of the people connect the charger to the network, or to the grid, sorry, to the power grid, and keep it there for most of the time. But you charge your phone, probably. We have today very efficient phones. You, you, far, you might charge the phone battery probably every third day, probably once a week. But your battery charger burns power all day, all night long. So actually, we could improve efficiency quite a bit by simply unplugging our chargers. 90% of the energy consumption, however, is the base station. Base station sites cooling of the base station and the uh, network behind it. And that's actually a good thing that the energy consumption is such con concentrated. You have heard earlier the telephone bill, NTT Docomo is complaining about, not the telephone, the electricity bill. Everybody's complaining nowadays about the electricity bill. The operators really noticed it's OPEX. Electricity is OPEX of the network and making energy efficient base stations is a clearly a competitive edge for every base station supplier. So we don't need much policy or anything here. The operators itself will push us manufacturer, equipment manufacturer to really deliver the most efficient equipment. If you look on the other side to the fixed broadband access, <clears throat> the situation is quite different. Less than 30% is uh, coming from the central office, from the distribution, which is operator OPEX. Of course, also the operator complains here, we have to deliver 
more efficient network, uh, more efficient equipment. But unfortunately, nearly three quarter of the energy consumption is consumed at home. And that's distributed over millions and billions of users. That means every user probably has a VLAN point burning 10 watt or a cordless phone burning 10 to 15 watt or probably something else burning 100 watt. It doesn't really matter if you burn 10 watt or 1 watt or 100 watt, it's just all the same in your home. It just disappears in the noise of your home bill. You don't see a difference. So there is no real incentive to improve the energy efficiency of the home equipment. Nah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, there are some principal differences between fixed and mobile networks. First, the dominating energy consumption is the operator-driven network. In the fixed access, the dominant energy consumption occurs by the user segment, which is widely distributed. The mobile cellular network operator OPEX constraints are really a very efficient instrument to drive energy efficiency of cellular networks. The wide distribution of the fixed wireline access, in a way, <coughs> there is no direct incentive. It needs other, other instruments to improve energy efficiency of the consumer products. Again, on the mobile cellular network, efficiency improvements, which we, ha we have just shown in a previous presentation from 14% uh, efficiency to 28% efficiency improvement of the power amplifier of the base station. There are still further improvements in power amplifier <coughs> and uh, in the base station in general. So we assume this growth, this coming billion mobile users, we can compensate for the energy consumption of this uh, future growth, at least for the next five years. On the other side, in fixed wireline, efficiency improvements of copper, si copper systems cannot compensate for the increased, increasing demand. Luckily, on the fixed wireline access, <coughs> the transition from copper to fiber, fiber to the home, can really dramatically improve energy efficiency and reduce energy consumption. Unfortunately, we don't have this kind of technology in the wireless. We go to the air and there's no replacement for the air. So, let me summarize. <clears throat> for environmentally sustainable business, we have to maximize our positive influence, but as I said, we can only support this. We cannot drive it. It's everybody of us who has to make this change. Connectivity is our business, but how efficient we do it, minimizing our own footprint is very important for our industry. And finally, by improving efficiency, making it both energy and cost efficient, we can combine environmental and business benefits. Uh -huh. It doesn't want to go to the last slide. <coughs> so thank you very much. That was anyhow. Okay, here it comes. Safe energy, safe money. Thank you very much.